know, when you think like an artist, um, you wake up and you have different things on your mind. I, uh, I woke up this morning and had a song on my mind. What just any song? It was a song. Five years since I think I played that song, but uh, I woke up thinking about it this morning, and it sort of blew my mind. I went, "What in the world is that on my mind for?" And um, <laughs> and so here, here's what's happened. I grabbed my guitar out of the closet, had to dig it out, and and tuned it up. And there in the case were my picks. They're laying here on my desk this morning. I think you can see that right there in the old capo that goes on that guitar. That is a guitar that I've had for many, many years. Um, one of my guitars is passed off to a son-in-law who plays it uh, quite regularly uh, on Sunday mornings. And uh, me, I just pick that one around every now and then. I haven't played that guitar probably in, I don't know, maybe, maybe eight or ten months, maybe a year. Uh, maybe a little more. I'm, I'm not sure, really. I just lose track. But it made me think of a song. And so I just was going to, while well, I fiddle around, which is what I do, I noodle, noodle, fiddle, fiddle with everything. When you think like an artist, every medium, every media, every brush and pen and lyric and song and all the things that come out of your mind are all open to you to use for art. And that is so awesome. Some of you say, but I love painting with acrylic. Don't stop if you love it. I love painting with oil. Don't stop if you love it. I love watercolor. I like pen and ink. I like, I hope you like it all. Art is food. You know, this is the week that Carol teaches her cooking class. And she is just uh, breaking into it in big time. Uh, Mondays will be the day that she plans her final menu. Tuesday, she'll shop for everything. And then by Tuesday evening, about six o'clock, the house fills up with uh, 10, 12 young women who come in and she puts them in teams and they make a dinner. And then the evening is crazy until I just get lost. And then about 1130, 11, 11 something, I show up and I'm the uh, that's how I get my hands clean. You get all the ink and, and the paint out of them. I wash dishes. Um, and that's not, oh, good for you. That's not that at all. It's just one way I can serve what she does. And so uh, it's an art form. It's an art form. So, hey, I hope you're doing well today. I want to say hello. And then I'm going to paint something musical just because I woke up with this scene that I haven't painted in several years. And I thought I would. Hey, this is Noodle Doodle Fiddle Piddle. And um, uh, it's a book that um, Pat... Brooks, uh, P.L. Brooks, you know her on the show, Patricia Brooks. Um, it's it's confusing to send them an email because uh, her husband is Peter. So Peter and Pat Brooks, and they both get to, I don't know, I don't understand it. But I was sending emails one time, and she said, you yeah, know, Peter keeps giving me the emails you're sending. I'm going like, well, I should stop putting the initials and put yours. But um, these are things I say on the show. I say, I still say, I said back then when I started almost two years ago, get behind the mule and keep plowing. And here's the story of what that means. And I just said, uh, Pat, these are the ones that I want to choose. She would kept a long list of things I said on the show. Start small and simple. You want to learn to play the guitar? Well, then get a guitar and get one that'll stay in tune. And you just, that's, that's what happened to me when I was eight years old. And my fingers hurt today because I've played for about five minutes this morning before I came on the air and how tender they've gotten in just a few months. This book is available on Amazon.com. You can get it there along with uh, Hey Rue, What's a Wheelbarrow, my children's book. And thank you for sharing that with your kids. And also um, Rubots, which is my book about roosters uh, and small farm equipment becoming 
Robots? No, robots. And so it's a coloring book for kids. So enjoy it if, if they're all out there. Um, hey, I've got some Kilimanjaro paper on the desk. Let me say hello to some of you. And uh, then let me jump on. I just thought it'd be fun to just grab the guitar and uh, do something goofy this morning. So, hey, Miss Carla, thanks for being on the show. Pat Brooks, you're right there, right off the, the shooting match. Uh, Denise Albright, thank you for being on the show. Laura Belushi from uh, Sunny in Attica, New York. Deborah Beasley, Karen Binder, Jane Anthalzer, Bob. Uh, ooh, morning from the Fuddy Duddy. Hey, buddy, Cornfields of Iowa. I added, hey, buddy, because it just rhymed. Bob and Julie up there in the cornfields, and they're probably pretty flat and uh, and brown right now. Maybe they're covered with snow. I don't know. Um, I say up there, but that's way out there. I mean, that is a long way. I don't even know how the phone line gets there. Uh, from Bob and Julie Heidenrich. Uh, Virginia Mann, Deborah Spangler, thanks for you for being on the show. Kathy Morrow, Glenda Edwards Small, blessings to you. Uh, Deborah Tauber, Dana Smith, Tamberly Marie. Um, Linda Linhart, springtime in Orlando. I bet it is. Tiffany Lines from Bernie, California. Uh, Gail Anderson, thank you for being on the show. Uh, I think you had a painting that left my house. I think it was in a drawing that I haven't mailed yet, but it's on its way. I did have the unfortunate... Um, um, I, I sent someone their money back this week because I, there's a painting that is lost in the mail somewhere, and I just said, you know what? Um I'm so sorry. Here's your, here's a refund. It was purchased back early in December and it just hadn't shown up. And I've had them three weeks that, that do get here, but I hate it when that happens. So pardon me, pardon the mail system. It is what it is, but, um, refunds coming to you. Donna Sell Barton, Kathy Taylor, Burt Crone. Good morning from you. Cold and windy. Greenville takes the feathers right off a rooster. Then the rooster would be dressed. If all his feathers came off, the butcher says when they take all the feathers off the hen, it's dressed. That is so different, okay? Would you like this hen dressed? No, I'd like it undressed, okay? But figure that out on your own. Nancy Catlett, John Robert Small, good morning from the mountains of Veracruz. Um, top of the morning to you, Michael. Um, Nancy Catlett has a Rue collection starting on her wall somewhere. I love it. Fern Skelly, you do too. Uh, Laurie Stanley, Handelmeyer Henderson, uh, Javine McCabe, um, Karen Binder, let's see. I said hello to you here. And uh, Heather Kuman. Heather Kuman said her name meant cowboy. I sent you a note. I hope you picked that up. One of my favorite cowboy drawers who I never got to meet. I was a few years short. I knew about him early in the 90s, or actually before that, early in the 70s. And then um, early 2000, I went to Pinehurst and uh, he left this planet 2002. Um, Betsy Soblowski, thank you for being on the show. Pat Thompson. Uh, Carol Todd Mundy, Karen Denver, thank you for being on here. Um, all right, here we go. I'm going to jump in here and paint you a little something musical today. I hope you're on the show. Mike Pratt, I'll give it a seven, easy to dance to, not crazy about the lyrics. <laughs> oh, I'll give it a seven. Hey, man, I, and thank you for even listening. I haven't played my guitar in so many months, I don't even know if I can play it. But that song came out of One Morning Setting on Fox News in 2004. Uh, when I, I, A couple years after I came to Charlotte, I met the manager, uh, general manager of Fox News here in Charlotte. And he said, hey, come and be a part of our news team. And I go, man, I don't want to read the news. I mean, like, come on, do I have to sit and just read off a teleprompter today? The police stopped. No, I, I just don't want to do that. But thank you. I'm flattered. He said, no, I want you to do something creative and help me put the team together. You all know the story maybe. And, uh, and then what happened was, uh, he said, hey, how about doing something creative like the traffic? And I'm going like, that's even, that's even worse, John. Uh, we called him Hutch. And I said, Hutch, that's even worse because, um, you know, it's like, it's six in the morning. I had to leave my house at four o'clock, get there, do my own makeup, seriously, which took about three minutes. And you just go in there and you rub a few things on you, try to stop the glare on your head. I get under the TV lights and I had these uh, maps and I go, nobody cares what the traffic is when they're having a cup of tea watching at home. You know, they're, they're not going to, they're not even leaving for an hour. They're just sort of wandering through and having breakfast and getting the kids off to school. Then they'll worry about it. He goes, no, they, he said, okay, just do, just throw the traffic maps up and do something creative. And so I asked him to hang my guitar on the back wall and I'd say, here's the traffic maps. I'll just play something. So I played these little ditties. I put on my finger picks 
And uh, like I played, like when I was playing a banjo, and I just make up these little songs, do, 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 and the traffic maps would flash. I go, don't have to worry about the royalties; you can use them on the show. And uh, so some of those things stuck with me. This morning, about four thirty, <laughs> I woke up and thought, "Oh no!" And I went, "Wait, no, I don't do that anymore." And that song popped in my head, and so I just grabbed my guitar, went back in the closet, dug, dug my guitar, hauled it upstairs, and uh, that's the rest of the story. <laughs> hey, let me paint something, but it's musical. Ready for this? Becky Bailey, thanks from Frosty Woodstock, Vermont. I bet it's cold up there. Holy smokes. Hey, thanks for being on the show. Um, I've got some uh, Kilimanjaro 140-pound original bright white paper. It's cold pressed. It's 100% rag cotton. And by the way, uh, if you hashtag Rue857, you'll go to a YouTube site. Uh, it's my site, but you'll see some little 8-minute and 57-second uh, pieces that I'm starting to pile on there. Please subscribe to my YouTube if you would. That's going to be a thing I'm going to ask for this year as I shift some gears from the way I'm doing Roo Doodles. And I'm putting some short pieces out there for you to share with your kids and your grandkids. So you'll see that. And I did a whole thing on paper yesterday. A review for many of you, but might be new for some of you who joined the show and go, what kind of paper does he like? What kind of paper is, what is cold press? What is hot press? What is... Uh, Hot mama, red hot paint. I'm going to do a whole thing on, uh, I did a thing on paint. I've done a thing on brushes and pens. It's all out there. All right. There's some gradu on this page, but I figure it'll get caught in the frame. So I'm just going to sketch something and we'll go from there. All right. And it's got to be a musical sketch this morning. I'm going to use a Pentel 05 Super Gel Needle Extreme Gel Needle Tip. Needle tip. If you're buying these pens, don't forget to look on the little pack and see if it says needle tip. That's if you want to sketch with the pen that I'm using. If you don't, it's no big deal to me. I just love the way this pen bleeds into the painting. So that's why I'm doing it. Throw some music on here and uh, let's see if we can uh, let's see if we can make something happen here. Let's let me find something that might be uh, apropos to what I'm painting this morning. I don't know what this song is. It's so little I don't hear it, that's what it is. Ah, it's a little musical. Here we go. So I think what I want is a root and a hen playing together. And this is kind of an older painting of mine, but I'm gonna take it right here. I'm not gonna sketch it in pencil, I'm just gonna rough it out in pen. And I'm gonna start the root first and I'll show you what I'm doing. I'm gonna do his head because once I get the head sized up, everything else kind of falls in place. Well, it doesn't fall, but in scale, I know how big to make his body according to how big I make his head. I'm gonna have him standing here looking down like this, a little bigger than I actually wanted it, I think, but it'll work. And then I think what I wanna do is I wanna put a banjo in his, in his hands and I wanna put it right here. So the banjo's right there. It's a little off oops, round because it's on the elliptoid side there. Um, and then I'm gonna go up here with the, with the banjo neck. Got a little five string here. And then let's see, I want a bump, and then a larger bump, and then a knob, and then a, and a larger bump, and come down. That's oversized, but that'll give you a little idea of the banjo. Long neck banjo, maybe a, um, who knows what it is. And then uh, these little pieces right here are the bell hoops or the head hoops the rings that hold it in place. And all banjos have a little piece back here to hold the strings tight that go in. Then they have a bridge, that's like so. And then they have frets on the neck, like so. There we go. All right, that ain't bad, that ain't bad. I like it, I'll take it. And then maybe he's got his wing bit over here, he's here. He's got his tail feathers coming out this way, like so. And then maybe this side is coming up and. I might just actually put a little bit of a cord up there on that. There you go. So now I have him starting to play the cotton picking thing. We'll get it down here like this. I'm going to bring this leg down like so, and I'm going to put it on a wash tub. There it is. You got to have a wash tub if you've got a bluegrass band and his feet are hanging off like that. There's one. This one is going to come down. It'll have to come in, and this one will have to be standing out here like this. Maybe this toe's pressed up against the tub. Maybe he's kicking the tub. I would, I would if I were a rooster. Um, uh, Mike Pratt's on the show today. He would remember the Hillbilly Hoedown and uh, what we call the Redneck Review, which whether it's politically correct or not, you know, you grow up in East Tennessee, then you, you get that. But uh, uh, 
so there it is right there. Uh, I used to play on that on the stage at this camp where we were part of years ago. There's the rooster. There's him holding his banjo. I'll do a little strap later. Uh, that's kind of working out well. I like it like where it's going. All right, so let's see. Uh, can I bring my jug, Miss Carla said. <laughs> yes, I can put a jug player in here. Um, when are you going to do another auction, Karen says. Hey, real soon, probably before the end of the month, I'm going to do an auction and we'll just have a fun evening of uh, throw out all these different paintings. i got tons of bees and roosters and pieces that I've done as demos. I'll pile them on the desk and we'll start them all at that high, outrageous art price of $8.57 and see where they go because I need to clear off the box and then give me a week or so too and I'll put them in the mail and they'll come to you. Uh, thank you much. That's a great question. Um, all right, here we go. Uh, that's that. Uh, other than the weather reports that I see coming in, I'm always just going to try and look back and, and find any questions that some of you have. If you throw those in there, uh, uh, Deborah Spangler says, enjoy your guitar picking if you call it that. Okay. Uh, uh, would you, question, would you show how to do rooster legs and feet? Um, sure. I'll do that. Okay. Um, your guidance and the banjo explain. There you go. If you're going to paint a banjo, you know, it's easy for me to paint a banjo because I, I don't really play one well, but I've known to play one. And behind my camera right over there where I'm pointing now, there are two banjos hanging on the wall. One of them is a very inexpensive banjo that I just keep hanging on the wall for decor, but it's, it's playable. The other is a banjo that I started building years ago. I really sold my, uh, best banjo um, many, many years ago uh, to uh, a gentleman that I stay in touch with in Tokyo. And uh, I didn't play it anymore. It was a handmade piece. It was a claw hammer open back. And he was collecting folk instrument to teach middle schoolers in Japan about American folk music. I'm going like, what a story that is. And he gave me a great price. In fact, he even sent me more money than it was worth and said, hey, it was during the time when my sons was getting married. And he said, uh, this is my donation to your son's wedding. I mean, what a cool thing is that? Okay, so here we go. So what I'm trying to do right now is just uh, build the rest of this story that I just thought of. So here it goes. Let's see. I think I want a hen playing this morning. And so I'm going to, and they're looking at each other like musicians would. There she is. There's her, there's her waddle. Here's her comb right here, and she's going to be playing, uh, one of my favorite uh, instruments for a hymn to play is an accordion, and not, here we go, just with a pen, just make it work, let's see, I know it's got to have some membrane in it like this, there we go, that'll be good, and it's got to have a keyboard over on this side, and it'll have a little bit of uh, notes right here like this. And then on this side, it's got another bar, and these are the buttons. I wish I played an accordion. I promise you, but I don't wish it enough to just do it because guess what? If you wanted to learn it, you could. But I think it would take me a little longer than it took me to uh, play anything else. The, the banjo, I finally figured, or the, well, I didn't really finally figure it out, but uh, I did figure out how to, how to play the banjo. So here's this little hen, and she's standing here playing, and she's not as tall as the roof, so you know what that means. I'm gonna to have to put a box over here, but this box will not be wasted, and I'll show you why in just a second. I do want this foot over here, and June, take a look at how I did that foot. Did you see that? I just drug that over a little bit. I'm gonna come in on this drawing just a little bit for you so you can see what I'm doing a little more. Let me come in right there, boom. If I get a focus here, there you go. That's a little bit of it. Almost the whole painting's in there, but you can just see. I just pop up these little knobs on the feet, okay? Um, we've got time. Let's just show you what I'm talking about here. Grab a little piece of drawing paper, and if that foot, if that rooster leg is coming down, you know, bird legs hinge differently than our legs. Our legs hinge here. Here's the knee. Here's the pants leg. There's the shoe. Okay, well, I actually drew that. So, but a rooster's legs hinge like backwards. Okay, see the difference? And then you got the leg that comes out like this. It almost look like a dog toe the way I draw mine. The middle toe on a rooster is longer than the other toe. This toe is about the same. 
and then they got a back toe here. They're like Mickey Mouse. They only have four fingers. These three fingers and a thumb, if you call that. Mickey just has four fingers that sticks out there. Um, roosters are kind of like that. This, this is their balance piece. And then I put a toenail on them like this. And then I'll come back in and where that turns, I'll put in some just veining in them a little bit here. That comes down and then there's a spur here. And so suddenly I have this rooster leg. So if I'm doing it again, if, if I'm wanting to be facing me, I can do them like this. That's not bad. That's kind of a very good, quick um, chicken foot. Uh, I would say get a piece of paper and a big piece. And in fact, it could be this big and spend an hour with a pot of tea and just do feet, feet, feet until you've done how many? 50. Stay behind the mule. Because what happens now is when I come out with that rooster leg kicked out here, you don't see the elbow lots of times going back that way, but it's there. It's hidden up here. Oh, there's one right there. See, you don't see this one, but there's one. There's the elbow right there. Come in, click this down a little bit. I'm going to put a spur right there. That is so close to this. Look here. Even in the speed drawing, there's the toenails. There's the toenail hanging off there. There's the hens. Same thing on all those. You see that right there? Okay. So now I have this hen, and she's up here. That's her little round comb here. Fatter bill. Maybe she's reaching in with this here. She's got... Um... All right. Uh, but, but I couldn't stop there. No, no, no. You wouldn't let me stop there. So let's put it, let's put this in a box and in the box, I'm going to put a little back in the box and just, I'm, I'm going to put a little peep in there. You know, I draw my peeps with a little bill and in and, and the peeps hand right here, uh, I'm going to draw two spoons. <laughs> so here's your spoon player right here. Little peep playing spoons in there. And he's standing in the front of the box with the spoons. There they are right there. That's kind of fun. Okay, so this is a wash tub, so it's going to have some rings on it. And then I'm thinking there is a, that's fine. We'll put another box over here. But, oh, 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 got one right here. Look at this. You know, if I got a wash tub in the band, in my little, then I'm going to have an eye bolt right here. And I'm going to have a, 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 a stick coming up, a shovel handle from the wash tub right here. It's got, how you know it's a shovel handle because it has one of these little metal pieces on the end. And then it's got a string wrapped around it here, tied on, and it's coming down to the eye bolt. And then there's a little peep right here, standing next to his mama. There he is, he's boxed in there and he's got his hand out and he's, he's playing the string. He's playing what we call in the music business, a gut bucket. Probably not politically correct if you're talking about a chicken band, okay, having a gut bucket. So, all right, so then I'm just going to cross hatch some of this down here on the bottom just to kind of make it dirt. Do I wish I'd have started this painting up a little higher? Well, most certainly, you know, but for the purpose of a demonstration <coughs> and how I love to frustrate framers, it doesn't really matter to me at all. Who cares? They go like, does this guy not know that he can make it easier on us? I know. I've had framers tell me that. And I'm going like, hey, I've been framed. What do you think? I'm supposed to just, you know, if, if I didn't need you to work on it, I'd do it myself. I need you to just get with it here. And so I'm not that tough on them. You know that. I talk big, but I don't really mean it all. There's a decor piece on the on the accordion right there, a little accordion. I like that. I like how this leg's kicking out to the side. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that I need this, um, I need this jug right here. So let's just put the ring on this side. So, um, and let's put the jug here like this. There it is right there. And then, then the lips of the jug are here. And then I know it's supposed to have XXX on it, which is uh, a symbol of uh, flammable or, uh, don't drink this because it could kill you. And I'll put a little bucket right here, just a little bucket like this with the bail. And then up here, I'm going to put the little peep who's blowing on the jug. That's pretty good. Even if I did just do it myself right there. So there's there's the jug right there. Okay, so that's that's pretty fun. All right, so there's my there's my band. Okay, so uh, not putting the strings on the banjo yet. And now all I got to do is, in the words of uh, one of my grandchildren, "Hey, Rue, you gonna color that?" I'm going like, uh, I prefer to say that I watercolor paint. 
well, color's color. And they go, you know, you're right. But I don't want it to just be perfect. I want it to be loose and in my style. So I'm going to use a bamboo brush. I've got some, uh, just in case I need some detail, I've got some American Journey brushes laying out here. But I've got some Yasutoma bamboo brushes. I've got my paint right here. I'm going to take this and a spray bottle. And I'm going to move it over here so you can't see it. So I'm swinging over out of the way and I'm going to pump this spray a little bit just to wake these colors up. There they are. I just wet them a little bit. You can see a little bit of a sheen on there. So I sprayed it with a real mist. She's looking up at him. Reminds me of looking up at my dad as he sang to me when I was a little girl. Kathy, that Carmatros, that's a that's a very uh, the jug of white lightning. <laughs> uh, my great uncle Earl got in big trouble with Aunt Aggie. Bent some good spoons for playing music. Oh my gosh. Yeah, don't be bending the good spoons. Uh, I, I got in trouble one time bending a fork at a um, retreat center. I went in and was doing, showing them the magic trick, and I just went and bent this fork. And the, and the chef came and said, you owe me. And I said, okay, break it down. I just bent this fork. It's a 17-cent fork. And I got another one from the last camp I went to, and he, he wasn't real happy with me. And I wasn't trying to be a wise guy, but I was. All right, here we go. I'm going to widen this out just a little bit here. There you go, right there. Back to so you can see the whole thing. Um, go in for a focal point and hit that. And that'll give you a little bit of making this thing. See if I can paint it right there and remember where I am. And we'll go from there. Okay. So my inspiration this morning is my finger picks. I had them laying out there. These really is what I use on a banjo, but I also learned to pick the guitar with them. And it reminded me of that uh, Chet Atkins sort of. Uh, Doc Watson, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, lead with your thumb. My dad always picked with his thumb, and I love that. Um, hey, Julie, welcome to the show. Um, Karen says this will be a great auction piece. Okay, Karen, send, save your money, and I'll sell it in auction. I just look like that when Hen used to play. I look just like that little Hen when I used to play the accordion. Oh, my gosh. Paulette Hamilton used to play the accordion. I love it. Hey, I they, they are... One of my favorite accordion players actually used to be in a band called Riders in the Sky. That dude could kill it. And so it's also fun when you all uh, jump in here. All right, so here we go. So I'm now I'm going to add a little watercolor because I've painted this in my pen. But guess what happens with this pen? I'm going to grab a Lamy. This is my uh, German uh, pronounced. And John Robert Small says Lamy like mommy. For years, I called it a Lamy. But uh, maybe maybe he's right. And so... Uh, I haven't called them. So, Sabine, if you're on the show today from uh, Germany, send us a note. Is it Lamy like Mommy or is it Lamy like Sammy? Okay, so just tell me which one it is, and uh, we'll start calling it that officially on the show. I just know this. This is a medium point Lamy, Lamy pen. There it is if you can read it right there. Can you see that? L-A-M-Y. Wonderful fountain pen if you're looking for, but it's bold, okay? But I like it because here's what I can do when I can cross hatch with it like this and then jump on it right away with my brush. It, um, if I could find the brush I just had in my hand, here it is. Uh, it really bleeds well. Look at this. There's no paint coming out of my paint tray. This is just the pigment from the Lamy, Lamy um, brush. Okay, and so I love that black, and I also love how this extra water causes the other pieces of the ink to start to bleed. And so I'm going to put some of that right in here and just let it settle in. So I'm just putting some water down in here on top of the body of the roux, and this is sort of how I paint. Look, I'm not trying to use a roller and make everything um, pristine and even. Don't make it even. The rain that God sends to the earth doesn't fall even. It falls sporadically all around. And you look how the grass grows and the leaves grow. Everything's got undulations to it. And I just made that word up, I think, today for a watercolor painting. I don't know if you can actually use undulations in that. But I always add a little blue in here because I'll tell you why. French blue, ultramarine blue is just one of my favorite colors. And on this bright white Kilimanjaro paper, it just rocks, okay? It just pops off. And so I love that so much. A little black, a little blue, but I also think we need just a touch of red up in there to start bouncing that. And while I got red in my brush, I'm going to go in and I'm just going to drag some red down in here in the comb of this rooster like so. 
and uh, I'm holding the back about, what, three, three and a half inches, somewhere in there, and I'm just kind of going in. If I miss a little spot, like right there, so what? Let it alone. Let it be loose. Let it just dangle. I just put had enough paint in my brush already, and so what I did was I went and got some um, um, water, and I just threw a little water in there, uh, to uh, liven up that paint and let it flow just a little more. I'm going to do the same thing. Right now I'm reaching over here at my pan underneath my picture in picture there. I'm just grabbing a little bit of gamboge. See if I've got enough in that brush. And I'm going to, oh, I got enough then. Dropped it right in there. Okay, I'll just take that. I dropped it on the red, but I'm just going to let that orange happen. See, sometimes you just make a mistake and you just let it go. I like that. All right, let's just put a little, uh, let's put a little uh, purple in there and let it mix with that ink. This, remember, had no color. It's just the pen bleeding. And so I'm not trying to make this thing look like a real rooster, for heaven's sakes. I just sketched it with pen. Uh, he's out of the pen, I might add. Um, I know I'm ridiculous. Never pass up a good pun. That really wasn't a good one. I should have passed that one up. All right, so I want to get some, uh, I want to get a different color here. I want to get a little bit of, uh, uh, down here, I've got a little bit of uh, sienna brown, and I've got a mummy brown, and I'm just going to bring a little bit of a dirt brown color to this wing right in here, just even up here on the banjo neck, just like this, and down here, this would be where his finger picks would be. Just a little bit of dirt. I need a little more dirt. I mean, this is a barn scene. And so I just want this rooster to have a little bit of, I'll, I'm liking that. In fact, I'm going to stop while I'm ahead. I'm going to get ahead of myself. Uh, I'm going to go grab some more gamboge, which is that, that yellow, pop it in right there. And while I've got it, I'm just going to grab these little peeps. I didn't want that one on the bill of that one. Let's stop that. There we go. Come right in here, standing behind his mama's leg. This one is standing down in here in the box. Can you still see that? Yep. Okay. Grab that one right there. And while I've got the yellow out, I'll just grab this one over here too and just let him kind of come in like that. Notice I left a little spot where that wing's coming down through there. I'm going to let that wing drop over him so he's covered in his father's wings. I like it. I like it. Um, I think the hen herself should also be French blue. And I'm going to get rid of this brush. Oh, no. Look what I just did. That's why you got to be careful when you're working like I work too fast. It rolled off of my ink and rolled on, but I think I can rescue it. Watch this. Go in here with a little eraser. Get some color on that. It won't matter a bit when I splatter it. So there we go. I think we rescued it. The brush rolled across the paint while it was still wet. I'm going to grab a, uh, a smaller brush. This is a number six. A four might be great if I had one. What's this right here? Oh, there's a four right there. I'm going to grab a four and I'm going to go in and I'm just going to grab and put a little water up in this hen right here. And I'm working carefully, a little tighter grip on my brush than normal, but I'm also working a little carefully around this accordion because I want to leave it sort of loose um, and free of the paint. I'm getting ready to drop on here. So why am I painting with water first? It's watercolor, water, then color. Now I'm going to go get some of this. Uh, I want this to be a French hen. So I'm going to go get some of this uh, aqu uh, aquamarine blue, uh, French blue, I call it. And I'm just going to drop a little in like this and just come down in that accordion. There it is right there. And I've got her now just blued in really nicely up here too, up on her head right into there. Uh, and there you see the little French blue hen. She's kind of come in with all the... Uh, all the accoutrements that she needs to be a French hen, a little blue body, a little red, and I'm going to paint her comb. Hen's combs are a little lower. How do I know that? Because I had chickens in my backyard. Um, They're a messy bunch, but man, nothing like a good old fresh egg that when you break it open, it's as orange as it can be. You just got to love it. Um, All right. So there we go. I want a little more of this turquoise right in here just because I want that to pop a little bit. Um, I'm struggling with where to put my brushes this morning. I've missed the jar. I laid it on the side of the water thing. It rolled over. Maybe it's because I'm 
painting like this. Maybe it's because I'm painting bluegrass. My foot's tapping. <laughs> All right. Mr. Clean. Yep. Mr. Clean says you can take that offending spot off. Yeah. And I know you, Pat, you're so right. Pat's artwork uh, never has a, a jot or a tittle on it that's not supposed to be there. Uh, it's her style, and I love it. Uh, even in her cartoon art, it's just uh, like she wants it. Me, uh, if I had a Mr. Clean thing up here, I'd have to clean up my office. So, no, I'm not going down to the kitchen to get one of those, but I love that. That's a, that's a great uh, <laughs> that's a great idea. <clears throat> Sometimes I'll just take another piece of wet paper towel like this, and I'll stick it in my clean water, and I'll go in right here, and I'll turn this around, and I'll go, and I'll just put some clean water here, and I'll rub it like this, and it'll take it out. You remember, I'm going to splatter my paintings anyway. So it, for me, it doesn't really affect the fact that that uh, I've, I've, I've spilled paint on them. I just do that anyway. And sometimes, you know, when I'm painting with this, I'll just actually just throw paint in there like that anyway. So, so it really doesn't bother me that there's splatters around. I figure if these people are playing and they're in the barn and they're kicking up a dust storm, it's not going to matter at all if there's a little bit of dust in the air. That's just kind of how I paint. This is a wooden crate, and I think it's got a... A piece like this uh, with some and maybe some nail holes that I'll put in there a little bit I also like to put some bent nails in just for a little detail for those of you who say loose painters never do detail shame on you uh, shovel handle needs to be this brown I'll just put a little bit of brown coming down on it like this except for that bottom part that's where you always paint the shovel handle like uh, with a piece of orange and orange on the top. Why? That's because we know it's our shovel. However, everybody who owns shovels paints them with orange and green. So they all get confused at the end of the day anyway. I love that concept though. All right. Um, hey, uh, fun things coming up I want to tell you about. Um, the uh, folks from Yasatoma are, I'm meeting with them today via Zoom. Later, later this afternoon, we're having a little Zoom call to set up some um, a show uh, that we're going to do on Friday. So if you're making a note, uh, Rue has been asked to, oh, that's me, grandkids call me that anyway. I've been asked to join Yasatoma uh, with uh, Phoebe and Karen on Friday in a show that they're doing, and we're going to paint something using Yasatoma paint and Yasatoma brushes. And... Uh, uh, we'll, I'll paint it online. So I think that's going to be about 4 Eastern time. I think it's 4 p.m. Eastern time on Friday. I don't know, meeting on that tomorrow, so I'll tell you Tuesday uh, how all that can kind of come together if that's going to work. But I just want you to put that out there on your notes. I like to pass on events like that when we can have them. Um, and they were called and kind enough to invite me uh, on a little bit of a, a Zoom and said, hey, would you be part of our broadcast and um so i'm gonna do that with them that'll be fun lord willing we'll see how that goes all right so i need a little bit of leg color and what i do there is i just dip into this gamboge and i get a little bit of uh, uh gamboge in there and then i touch it just a touch clean brush touch a little bit of red clean brush touch a little bit of red again whoa that's way too much but we'll get it a little more yellow now I'm getting this cool orange. You think, why wouldn't you just use orange? Well, I kind of like to mix my own because I like to put a little bit of, of uh, French gray in there like this and just let it stay a little bit loose. Can you see that swirl right there? And that's what I'm going to pick up in my brush, rolling it gently in like that. And that's what I'm going to do the legs with right here. Okay, just, just a little bit of that so that it comes in. I don't want the legs really, really orange. I don't want them to look like they've been cooked. Okay, you know, lobsters turn completely red when they've been cooked. Well, I'm not cooking lobsters or cooking chickens here. That would not be good. Um, and then if I want a little touch of orange underneath, just for shading, I've got some. So if I start lighter, I can always add to it. Think about watercolor and start with your light colors and then let the rest of them just sort of bleed in as they need to. Um, that'll always be helpful in the process of, uh, of that. Uh, how to do it. If you start with the dark color first, you've killed all the lights that go over it later. Kill the lights, they say. All right. I have some titanium white over here that I'm just dipping my brush in and look at this. Whoa, what? He put some titanium white in a painting? Yeah, I just should have had a little more holidays in there, but I did like that. I'm going to splatter a little bit here. I'm going to go for a smaller brush, even smaller. Let's reach in here and grab myself a 
an old something. Let's try to find something that's got a number on it. Here's a number three. I'll grab a three, and I'm going to go in, and I'm going to, I'm going to paint this uh, accordion. And I think what I'm going to do here is just use some Payne's Gray uh, for the uh, veins itself of the accordion like this. Just paint it down like that. Maybe a little lamp black on the inside so it gets darker down in here like this. And then I want some really interesting color for this accordion. Accordions, and why wouldn't she be playing a rose-colored accordion? Oh, yeah, that's going to be good. So let's just put a little bit of, uh, that's not good that right there. That's just too dark. Let's pull some of that out of there and go in with a little bit of clean paint. Okay, so I'm using... I'm using this color right here, just a little bit of rose in there. And then, then I'm going to come in, and I might even just use my uh, fountain pen to do the, the uh, keys on the accordion. I'm turning the paper so I can just do the strokes here. Boom, 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 boom. And now you see the keyboard coming through. All right, and I'll come back in with those. Uh, I'll come back in with those little buttons in a minute, but I think you start to see this accordion come to, to life here just a little bit. And I can clean that up with my pen. So I'll come in here, I'll drew the tops of this, I'll add, and before long, you're going to see, when I add some more color to this accordion, you're going to see it come to life, I think. Okay, and I need to grab uh, this small brush and go in and get my paint for the legs and paint the legs of the hen. I think you're still on with me there. Yep, okay. Uh, make sure I was painting in the right place. I hate it when I'm down here painting somewhere and you're going like, what's he doing now? I can't even see. A little bit of yellow to show that little peep still sticking out there behind her leg. And um, this one, too, down here in the box. Look, I don't need to make everything perfectly to, to tell my story here. This is, the, this is the band. A little rust and dirt coming down on the wash tub like so. I like that. This box needs to be brown. There it is. I'm just going to grab a bigger brush. I do get in trouble by having lots of brushes piled over here because I don't lay them. I, I get in a hurry on the show. This is not how I paint normally. Well, you know what? That's probably not true. I paint pretty fast all the time, actually. It's not because I'm in a rush, but I like to stay on wet on wet paint. Uh, I think this jug needs to be almost that color right there, like... Um, uh, maybe it's a little, you know, they say a little brown jug, but I'm just going to go in and put this one a little more red like this. I think that's a good glaze color for this jug right there. And then you know how I'd paint, uh, I paint buckets. Usually buckets are always green. This one's sort of a green gold. There it is right there. And I'm going to put a little bit of uh, brown right here on this beak just to make it stand out. A little brown on this beak and a little brown on this beak. And then um, there it is. So, so now here's what I do. I'm going to, I'm going to paint the, a, a little bit of a Payne's gray on the neck of the banjo. Just give it a little bit of shade right here, a little darker up on the head. Cause that's made out of a piece of, uh, ebony. My banjo was, uh, made out of two different kinds of wood, African, uh, wood. And it had a, uh, a, a maple, a bird's eye maple neck with a pecan strip through the middle of it. Oh, Gosh, Bud Sosby built that banjo, an old man out of Asheville, North Carolina, who's uh, gone on to meet his maker now. And he was uh, terrific, just terrific. And uh, I told him a story to get him to build it. He said, I, 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 you can't afford one of my banjos. And I said, Bud, you, you can't afford to come to one of my storytelling concerts. And he goes, well, maybe I could. And I said, well, then maybe I could afford a banjo if you'd get your heart right and give me the good guy discount. And lo and behold, he starts building this thing. And I said, I, I don't want one of these hand letters. I just want something real simple. He put a star up here on the headpiece, inlaid it in. And I said, I don't want all this filigree mother of pearl stuff. I just want some dots in there. And, and I want a good head ring, a tone ring and uh, open back. And he built that thing. And it was called the showboat. He said, you know what? You changed me today because I like this banjo and I'm going to build another one. And I don't know. Uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Hiro so Hirososhi, Hirosaki, um, I'll have to get his name. I can't pronounce it without looking at it on email. The guy from Tokyo, I'll, uh, 
I'll, I'll show you sometime uh, a picture of the banjo. Well, I don't know if I even have a picture of it, but I'll get you his name. And he said it still has showboat written on the back. And I love that so much. All right. So there's the painting coming together and uh, little spoons over here. And I'm not really going to paint the spoons. I'm just going to let them stay a little pen and ink. So let me get that little thing and just swipe it down through there just like that. That gives me a little bit of that, a little more rooster in there, a little more box. Come in with this pen and just block the box off a little bit more. Maybe a couple nails sticking out here and there. Some rust rings. Now I'm going to put some detail in. And I'm using that same pen to go back in. June, you were talking to me about chicken's feet. I painted them, and now I'm going to go back in and put in the toenails and the detail and the little... Um, the little spurs and also some little hairs sticking out like this and just some dots on them like so. See that? And they all start to come together. And there's the jug. And so what you got is this rough little whimsical folk-looking painting. Uh, I think they're playing out in the barnyard. So what I think I'd do then is just grab some uh, a little bit of green in this brush and, and a wet brush. Remember where I crosshatched this? I'm just going to go start sweeping it in like this and just let it start to turn a little brown. Let the pen bleed. Let the pen just be the color, but I'll add some shadow. But I think they're out in the farmyard, so I'm going to throw a little bit of grass in there. Um, it's January, but in two months, we're going to start getting springtime grass in here. It's just going to happen in Charlotte. Uh, it just does every year. Put some sprigs of it coming up right here. Uh, it'll be time to go outside, build a fire in the fire pit, and uh, get the neighbors to uh, learn how to play the banjo. That'll take another three years. And by that time, I'll have the yard raked and uh, they can come over. Hey, um, uh, let's see, Lori Stan probably shouldn't say plucking around the chickens. Now nah, I probably can't do that, but it's okay. It's uh, that's, that's how you get uh, dressed chickens. Uh, we need some square dancers in there. Yeah. Is the shovel behind the tub or on top of the tub? You cut the, you just cut the handle off of the shovel and you take the metal part and you let that rest on the edge of the tub and then you pull the string tight so it becomes the stand-up arm of the base, June. As you pull the string back so the, the shovel handle where the metal part attached to the shovel blade is now resting on the edge of the tub. And that's what makes a... A, a, a gut base, a wash tub base called a gut bucket. So that's how that works. So it's resting right there on top. As he pulls it back and and whacks the other string there, you can whack it with a, a, a bow, like a fiddle bow. You can just pluck it with your hand. If you pluck it with a hand all night long, you're going to need to wear a glove or you're going to wake up in the morning with a big old blister. And so uh, that's the early base. It was called a wash tub base or a gut bucket. You look them up online. You'll see them. You'll see plans how to make one. There's probably one in my shop. There is a wash tub in my shop. doesn't have a shovel handle on it right now, but it has an eye bolt. So it's there. Um, seriously. Um, all right. So there's a little, uh, little folk, uh, not only folk painting, but a uh, folk musician's painting. And there it is right there. I'm going to come in now and put some more detail in these buttons. There's a button, 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 button. You probably know how many there are. If you're painting an accordion, you should. Um, and also, it's not a full scale. You can't get 88 notes on an accordion, but there's a little decor right there. And there's the, the accordion coming into play. No pun intended on what I just said there. There's the eyeballs and the little peeps. So come back in and put those in. There's the jug with the X's right there. Um, now, what's missing? Ah, oh, some strings on the banjo. So let's just put five of them on there. There's the fifth string. There's three. There's three. There's three. And there's the last one right there. And it's all right if it's twang down there. And then I like to just have the string sort of sticking out. Uh, and I'll come in here and put the little nose piece on that roux. And then I think I need to uh, splatter it a little bit, to block this off. Look at that painting right there. Uh, I need a circle right there. I need I need something to stick to. Yasutoma. Oh, I love my Yasutoma brushes. Thank you so much. There is Thar Torque, Terry Tardy. There is a Thar Torque. I'm not sure what you're saying. Uh, 
My mom used to square dance with a group from uh, Festus in the 80s and 90s. Oh, my gosh, you guys are blowing my mind. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Marina Moore, thank you so much for your comment. Mine was gilded up with gold. I'd love to have a rose one. Paulette Hamilton, dead gum accordion player. I think that's funny. Uh, little Brown Jug, uh, very fall celebration. Schools are out. I love it. Musical instruments are made from such beautiful woods. I love curly maple. Yeah, isn't that great? It was curly bird eye maple. So it had these little eye spots in it were just fantastic. Uh, uh, thank you for loving this. Got to put a uh, you got to put a hole in the wash tub. Yeah, you got to put a hole in the wash tub. But if you use some plumber's putty, it'll still hold enough water to get your you know your dungarees uh, your overalls washed. Uh, June Jones says it's a museum piece. I wouldn't go that far, but I appreciate it. Uh, painting makes me want to live in the country. <laughs> turquoise, she says. Yes. Oh, that's what you were spelling. Yes, there was Terry Tardy Turquoise that went into the bottom end of this rooster. Um, okay. Sally Ann Smith says, we all want this painting. Okay, Sally Ann Smith, here's what we're going to do, though. First, I'm going to just go ahead, and I need I need something to make a circle out of. What have I got here? No, I'm just going to write it on there. I was going to really do this one kind of neat. Let me see what I have in my office. It'll work. Got to have something fun. Let's see. Oh, 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 my gosh. Give me a second here. Hey, talk amongst yourself while I, uh, while I go find something. I got just a thing to make a circle out of. I want to put a caption right across there like that right there, and I want to just follow a little bit of a line. So if you... Just be, just be patient there for a second. Okay, there we go. I solved this. There we go. All right, let's see if I can do this. I'm gonna lay this banjo right here, like this. Actually, I need to lay it the other way. I need to lay it right here like this. Let's see if I can get it to lay down. Oh, yeah, look at that right there. <laughs> Perfect. I just need a little bit of a, a little thin pencil line right here. That's gonna be close enough. See that right there? Now I just trace the banjo head. <laughs> I did it, I did it, I did it. Okay, I'm gonna put that over there so I won't bump into it in my chair. I'm gonna go back in for a little bit here. Let me see if we can do that right there. And then focus on it. Hold on one second. I'm just all over the place today. Don't you just love it? Live, working live without a net. That's what I call it. Okay. So I just did a small pencil line there, and I'm just going to use that as a little bit of a guide to uh, to take me around uh, take me around this painting. Um, I'm trying to get it dry. I don't have a heat gun up here. That would have been great had I had one up here. I would have. Uh, I don't want to lay my hand on this. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the caption on it once this completely dries. And I feel better about doing that. And then you'll have to just wait and see what it says tomorrow. It'll be fun. I know what the caption's going to be. I got it in my brain already. Uh, I think what I'll do right now is just grab a little bit of brush in the time I have left and give this a little bit of sky splatter, just right in here like this. And I, that'll all dry too. Turn this around so it doesn't look so uniform. Remember, sporadic rain falls sporadically. A little bit of dirt and dust down here in the bottom. Some paint's gray right in here. There's where people are playing, there's always dust in the air, especially if you've had the wash tub filled with, uh, you know, some uh, grain or corn husk or anything like that. You start playing, boom, 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 and who knows what's going to come out of the jug, right? So uh, a little bit of uh, gray splatter right in there. I'm loving this. This is just kind of a mess of a painting, and I'm, I'm, I'm into it already. I like the fact that her foot is up right there, not uh, actually even touching the box. Come back in here, do a little detail. 
I'll clean up these feet just a little bit, add some to the toes. There she is right there on his, I mean. And uh, I like it. I like it a lot. I think there's a blue feather that's sort of missing in my description of this. And I think it needs to come out right, right there to give me a little more balance up here, just right there. And then maybe a little bit of that purple that left me a minute ago. I want to bring that back in underneath right there. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I think that's the painting right there. Um, Rue, you have to come to our Walnut Valley Music Festival. You'd be in hog heaven. I wonder about hog heaven since the pigs went into the ocean. But I'll talk to you about that. wonder if Cheap Joe sells banjos for Timberlands. <laughs> <laughs> Reminds me of Disney Rooster and Robin Hood. I think he was a guitar player, wasn't he? Robin Hood and Little John run through the forest. I love totally follow him today. Lolly. You know, that was the voice of Roger Miller, see? Uh-huh. I think roosters are troubadours. I really do. I believe that they are the farm bards, which some of you know is one of my domains that I haven't used yet, but probably will this year. The farm bard. It's probably going to be the rooster that does some of my YouTube stuff. All right. So uh, don't forget to look me up on YouTube. You can find me at Rue at hashtag Rue 857 or hashtag anything. Rue Doodles, hashtag Michael Hahn, hashtag whatever. It'll take you to. Uh, uh, but I've done some short pieces. They're eight minutes and 57 seconds long. And they're just little helpful hints and helpful tips to watercoloring. Some things that you all have heard on this show probably many times, but uh, they work real well for helping people get uh, involved. If you want to help your kids or your grandkids get into watercolor, there'll be some places there. Hey, subscribe to the show. Would you do that? And hit the like button if you like it. If you don't, don't hit any button. <laughs> all right. All right. It's just about time for me to go. And thanks for all the likes this morning. Holy smokes. And thanks for sharing the show. Uh, good morning from Palm Desert in California. Teresa, thank you for being on the show. Elaine Barnett, Donna Buckley. Um, sometime explain the numbers 857. Well, I've got uh, two minutes and I'll tell you what 857 is right now. Okay, here it is. It has nothing to do with this little B on this page right here, which I kind of should just paint while I'm talking to you. Um, 857 is this, um, 857. It is three minutes before nine. When you think like an artist, when you think like an artist, things shouldn't be just cut and dry. Things should be a little different. You should look, you should put on, whether they work or not, whether you wear one pair of glasses or a pair that works as a headband, when you put those glasses on, you should look at life differently. You should go, oh my gosh. I see things that other people don't see. That's not, that's not a prideful statement. That is when you think like an artist, when everyone else is going, hey, we got to get to the dinner on time. You're going, hold on, hold on. The sun is just another five minutes from going down behind that mountain. And then I'll applaud and go. When the sun's coming up, you're the one who wakes up early to stand at the ocean's edge and stand there until it comes high enough to hurt your face. And as the, the reflection glances off and you go, I could get sunburned right now. When you see the trees in my, uh, my chip fur, my friend chip fur's words, what, how many, what, how many colors are on the leaves of the trees? You say green. Yeah, it's 70 miles an hour. But what if you slow down to 15? Oh, there's oranges and reds and blues and, and deep blacks in there. And there's twists and there's light spots and there's sparkles and there's yellow. There's brown rust. So when you think like an artist, you begin to think differently about things. So anybody can do a show at nine o'clock. I just said, you know what helps me remember things? Pictures and numbers and, and little cliches and um, statements and comments and quotes and those things that stick in my head. So 857 is roughly, no, it's not roughly. It's almost exactly three minutes before nine. But if you add 857 up, it equals 20. And I realized many years ago that 20 minutes of sketching something every day, every day, right now it's 9.57. Did you know that? I've been on for one hour. 
9.57 is 3 minutes before 10. 8.57, add that up and it's 20 minutes. 20 minutes sketching every day with a cup of tea will change your art. 8.57 is a, a, a wonderful time to throw out an idea that people catch the vision on or not. So I just decided to do Rue 8.57 at 8 minutes and 57 seconds. Some of them will run just a few seconds long by the time the show comes on live and fades out. But they're all right in there. I set a timer, and when the timer goes off, I hit, see you later. And so that's what they're about. So you can find those on YouTube and I'm going to continue doing them and I'm asking people to subscribe and I'm asking people to get involved this year and I'm asking, I'm asking some people to support me this year. So that's kind of where I'm going with this thing as I will be allowed to continue to think like an artist and take the time it takes uh, both in time and money and expenses to come and do a show like this in hopes that you might continue a community that's making a difference in the world. What if you just took eight minutes and 57 seconds every day and you worked on one guitar chord and you put it up and the next day you worked on another guitar chord for eight minutes. You know what would happen in six months? You would know three chords in the truth, as they say in country music, enough to play a good country song. All right. So that's it. I'm out of here. So 857 is as simple as that. Uh, here's the painting from this morning. There it is right there. Um, boom. And uh, I'll put the caption on it. It's almost dry. So I'm going to write the caption right there. I think you're going to love it when you see the caption tomorrow. Now you got to tune in to see what the caption is because I'm not going to do anything with this. I will, however, sign it right here. Rue doodles.com. I'm going to write Michael on there and I'm going to put 22. That's the year, and I love it like this. I like the fact that she's looking up, and we're going to give her some eyelashes, and I like the fact that he's looking down, and they've got this little thing going like, take it. No, you take it. No, you take it. No, you take it. See you tomorrow. Thanks for being a part of the show. Thanks for sharing the show, and, and uh, go to YouTube, would you? Um, have a great day. I am out of here like a herd of turtles. You have to make prints. Um only the good fairy can do that. <laughs> That's what Cinderella said when she went to get her pictures back. And they said, they're not here, but someday your prince will come. Boom, I'll be here all day. No, I won't. Got to leave.